I'm Brian Pierce. And I'm Samantha Cook. Welcome to another edition of Mohawk Magazine. For the hopeful college applicants watching tonight's show, we will see the procedures involved in the college application process. For the couch potato and armchair quarterback, we will get a few helpful hints on Super Bowl how-tos. Are you doing things the right way? Today, we received a letter from a concerned student on the violence in nightclubs. We'll look at that. And finally, we will get a glimpse of the ups, downs, in and outs of a local recording studio. As children, we all dream of what we want to be when we grow up. Many of us want to be recording artists, and many of us don't have that opportunity, but others do. A couple weeks ago, I spoke to a recording engineer at Second Stage Recording Studio. room at Second Stage Recording Studios with Mike Cotton, its owner and engineer. Hi, Mike. Hi. Um, what I guess I'd like to ask you first is, what is the process that takes place in the recording? Uh, basically, there's the three sections, which is the recording, overdubbing, and mixing. And what do each stage consist of? The recording is recording like the drums, which are called the bed tracks, and the bass, and maybe an uh, ghost vocal, a rough vocal track, and uh, rhythm guitar track. And then from there you would do the overdubbing where the singer would add some harmonies with his vocal, maybe a lead guitar, a tambourine, something, anything like that. And what follows this stage? After that would be the mixing stage where you're uh, basically balancing all the tracks, make, making sure that everything's even and parts aren't jumping out like an electric guitar all of a sudden going loud or a singer screaming into the microphone, you, you'd have to balance that a little bit out in the, in the mix down. And laying the basic tracks and doing the mixing is two separate stages? Right. How long does it take to record either an album or a song? Uh, it all depends on how complicated the song is and uh, how well the musicians know the song and how good their actual instruments sound when they bring them here to be recorded. The average, a really rough average is roughly around 10, 10 hours per song. So when, when they're recording, um, you can't really set a specific time. It's a matter of finding the right sounds and... Right. It all depends on, you know, how much time they want to spend to come up with a, a quality recording. Do you find today that bands are relying a great deal more on the electronics and technology behind recording? I don't think they're really relying on it, but it, it definitely does help. Uh, the amount of equipment that's available to the average person nowadays is unbelievable compared to, say, uh, 10 or 12 years ago, where they didn't even have actual four-track machines. So nowadays, somebody can go out and rent a piece of equipment or purchase something and record in a basement or, you know, and, and still come up with some good quality, whereas years ago you'd have to go into a studio and it would cost you a lot of money to basically do the same thing. How long have you been recording? Uh, well, I've roughly been recording for about 12 years now. I started when the first uh, four tracks came out on the market, and uh, I've been doing a lot of recording in basements, and I took a brief a course which gave me access to uh, some really good equipment that I wouldn't 
you know, have the chance to use with with my own budget. Um, You've obviously progressed to this machine now. Um, right. I, I had this mixing board for a few years um, now, and I've basic, basically been working with this and learning a lot in the meantime about sounds and miking techniques and... Uh, it's, it's quite hard to really get good sounds. It takes quite a bit of work. Um, it's, it's not easy to do. Do you help promote the bands that you record for? Uh, what, what I'm planning on doing is opening up the storefront here to sell uh, local and independent bands, t-shirts, um, tapes, posters, whatever merchandise they have themselves. Um, what I'll be doing is if they're playing a bar, they'll be able to advertise uh, that their tapes are on sale at this location. So if someone sees them and they, they want to get a tape, they don't have to try and hunt one of the band members down. They can come here and buy a tape or whatever piece of merchandise they'd like. Is there a large demand for your kind of recording in the Hamilton area? Uh, actually, there is. There's a, a, a lot of good bands have been coming out of Hamilton in the last few years. and. Uh, there always has been a lot of good musicians and a lot of talent in this town. future do you plan on opening your business to the public? Well, I'm hoping within the next three months or so I'll be able to open as a business. Um, there's a lot involved like insurance and you have to have the proper facilities and business tax. So I want to make sure when I do open it as a business that I'm ready to start operating right away. Uh, how much do you plan on charging when you do open up your business? Uh, roughly around the 20 to $25 an hour range, depending on how much time the band books. Will that change if they bring in an outside engineer? Um, no, it'll basically be around the same. Uh, a lot of bands do have their own people that they work with, and I'm willing to let somebody else that's qualified come in and use the facility. So you're only charging them for the use of your facilities, not necessarily for your your engineering as well. right basically with the rates that i'll be charging um yeah that's basically for the use of the studio uh do you feel your rates are going to be within compatibility of other recording studios uh right now at that price that'll be a lot cheaper than what um, the average price around the town so you're giving bands an advantage then right definitely um i've been having a lot of interest from people that normally you know, can't afford the 75 to $150, you know, per hour price tag to record a tape. So as soon as I hear my rates and stuff, I've been having a lot of interest that way. So I've been getting a lot of people that normally couldn't afford to come up and, you know, do some recording. What kind of outlook do you have for the future in your business? Well, I'm hoping to have it the studio here operating 24 hours a day. Um, besides me, I want to be able to hire a couple more engineers that, you know, basically have it in three shifts. And as far as the storefront goes, I'd like to have that operating like a normal store, nine to five through the week, and then nine to nine on Thursday, Friday, basic store hours. And I'd be hiring somebody down there to work that as well, hopefully a local musician that would sort of, you know, know a bit about the bands and, and uh, their merchandise and stuff. So you have a very op optimistic outlook towards your business in the future? Uh, yeah. I'm really optimistic. I'm pretty sure that it's going to work out. I've, you know, been working at it for quite a while now, and uh, things are starting to, to work out. Okay, well, great. I wish you all the luck then in the future. Thanks a lot. Now that we've seen the inside of a recording studio, perhaps we'll all have a little bit more respect for the time and effort that is put into making the music that we all love to listen to. Now tell me that wasn't a great show. Okay, it wasn't a great show. I, for one, can say I know a lot more about things I never really paid much attention to before. You can say that again. Now, tell me that wasn't a great show. Okay, it wasn't a great show. <laughs> I, for one, can say I know a lot more about things I never really paid much attention to before. You can say that again. Well, that's about it for the show tonight. We hope you enjoyed yourselves and learned...